What's going on, everybody? It's DadBot here. Welcome back to my Demon Souls walkthrough. Um, we are going to head straight to 1-4, uh, and we're going to take care of some important business here. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit. We're going to do a little bit of this level. Actually, most of it, I should say. We're not going to kill the boss, um, but we are going to do make a substantial dent in this level, and then we're going to do all the world tendency stuff in World One. Um, first things first, I'm going to take these guys out with my arrows. Um, in the last episode, I did buy pretty much as many arrows as I possibly could, and you are going to want to do the same. Um, and you will see why in just a little bit here. Um, why I recommend having a lot of arrows for this part. So just make sure that you have plenty of arrows in stock. Um, I believe there's a crystal lizard up here. Yeah, see if I can get him. If not, it's not the end of the world. I don't need to upgrade anything else in this playthrough, but um, might as well get him if I can, right? Ah, is he going? Oh, got him. Nice. There we go. Um, so there are three black phantoms. Um, they do not count technically as NPC black phantoms, so killing these ones are not going to uh, impact your character tendency at all. Um, but they are in our way. Um, it's kind of interesting, a little, a, a little, uh, tidbit here. These three black phantoms represent the three bosses we've killed so far in World 1. So the one that we're firing arrows at right now, he represents the penetrator. You see that he's got the, uh, the penetrator sword. Um, then the other one's got the tower knight shield. And then the one with the bow represents, uh, the phalanx. So these are, uh, like the black phantom forms of... Kind of the the human versions of of these uh, bosses before they turned into demons. So kind of a interesting little lore tidbit there. So I got I took care of the first one. Um, the 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 one with the bow. You have to watch out for her because she has a white bow and it does crazy crazy damage. Um, I'm pretty uh, bogged down here with my uh, burden, so I'm gonna send some stuff to storage. Do I have anything excess that I'm Oh, it's because I have so many arrows, that's why. So I'm just going to send all this to storage. It's another penetrating sword. We already have one, um, so I'm not going to need another one anyway. I'm going to go in and cast Second Chance, by the way, just for safety. Um, so he dropped a pure hard stone. That's not bad. We already have one, um, but now we have another. So since we have the thief string on, these guys are kind of you know, clueless to our presence. Um, I definitely don't want to fight both of these at the same time, so I'm trying to lure them one-on-one -on -one here. Because um, fighting them uh, two-on-one -on -one can be problematic. So, as you can imagine, this guy hits really, really hard. I need to put my shield back on. Um, and I'm going to fight him kind of uh, red-eyed knight style. Block his attacks. Um, he does... He does see, look at how much damage he just did. Um, he does put his shield back up fairly quickly um, after he attacks. So you just kind of have to wait for one of his big lunge attacks to punish. And I'm going to see if I can get a few more hits in. Nope, he put his shield up and then he hit me. Um, so yeah, one little jab does the vast majority of, 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 of my health. Um, let's see, is my, sh oh, my falchion's damaged. That's interesting. Um, so what that means is, since my falchion is at 30% durability now, what that means... Oh, because his, his spear, I believe, does uh, durability damage to my weapons. Um, I think that's kind of one of the properties of the spear that he's using. Um, so when, you're, when your weapon gets to 30% durability... So we got another tower shield, by the way. Um, it, you ha there's a penalty to your damage output. So it doesn't it doesn't completely negate your weapon's damage, but there is going to be a penalty to the damage output. Um, and again, that spear that he was using, one of the uh, side effects of that spear that we were being attacked with is that it is that it um, hurts your weapon's durability. Um, so I'm going to use one of these uh, sharpening stones and get my durability back up on on my uh, falchion here. So we're good to go now. It's kind of as if nothing ever happened. So now we have this last one to take care of. And, and these, these these phantoms are, you know, obviously they're a bit more difficult than your kind of average everyday enemy. 
This one kind of went down easy because you, you can stun lock her. Um, but she packs a punch, especially if you get hit with one of her arrows. And then um, if you let her, she will convert to using more melee. All right, I'm going to send these to storage. And I don't need a white bow because you need some pretty hefty stats to use that in your strength and dexterity. Um, so this way, we have a stone of ephemeral eyes, and you cannot go through this gate. Um, and over here, there's going to be another crystal lizard. Don't let him run away from you. Actually, yeah, he's behind this one. Um, so we got some sharp stone chunks. So he, he, he drops kind of the higher tier sharp stone and, and hard stone. Um, through here, there's going to be a, a, a red-eyed knight that comes through. Kind of just circle through here and lure him out because he's, he's hanging right on the inside there. Um, you don't want him to surprise you. So just sneak up behind him, get a backstab, or face him however you so please. Um, we got a sharpening stone. Nice. So we got the one that we used back. Um, so in here, there's going to be a couple... Uh, I think there's a couple archers up there. Yep. And then there's going to be another red-eyed knight that attacks us. And this one has a claymore. And so he hits extremely tough. And then we have this assassin guy. Um, so lots of enemies to worry about. So once we get up to a certain point on these stairs, that red-eyed knight's going to attack us. And so obviously fighting him on the stairs is not ideal. Um, so we'll charge after you. See if we'll come down here and fight him on this platform. He's got a claymore, so he is going to hit very, very hard. But as long as you get a backstab and keep the pressure on. Oh, he, uh, I need to heal up. Fortunately, that did not. Oh, he died from the fall damage. That's funny. Uh, fortunately, he did not take my second chance, so I do not need to recast. Um, all right. So there's a shortcut over there that we're going to unlock in just a bit. So once you walk through here, you're going to trigger a cutscene, and there is another dragon. So much like the first dragon, we are going to need lots and lots and lots of arrows. Um, so you want to kind of get as close as you can without the fire hitting you. Um, I think this should be a good spot. And really, all you got to do is you just want to pelt his leg. Just rapid fire as quickly as you can, arrows. And... Uh, you know, we're doing okay damage. But as you can tell, this is going to take a while. And once you get to about half health, he will fly away. And then we're going to have to take the other half of his health bar a bit later on. Uh, much like the red dragon, he does drop a soul. And the only purpose of that soul that he drops is to, um, is to consume it for souls. Um... And also, he will, if you're not in pure white world tendency, killing him actually gives you a boost to your uh, world tendency towards pure white. So, I'm just going to sit here for a while until the job is done. A few moments later. Okay, he's going to be flying away pretty soon here. He's almost at half health. And there he goes. He's going to fly. Um, so, we're not done with him yet. He is going to find a new perch, um, but for the time being, we're going to uh, pick up the loot on our way here. And there's a fat official right here. And, uh, ah, I took the hit there. Let's see if I can get a backstab. There we go. Got him. So got some good grass from him. Storied warrior soul. No way to get down there. Um, there's a crystal lizard up here. So you can actually, you can cross this bridge without killing the blue dragon. Uh, if you're not feeling particularly patient, um, you can just, you just have to time your run down this bridge here with, um, with his attack. And you'll, you'll be just fine as long as you're quick enough. Um, 
So you can actually hear him. He's found himself a new perch up here. Um, so Bior is over here trying to fight him as well. Um, if you do not kill him quickly enough, uh, Bior will die. So it, it doesn't really impact much if Bior dies. Um, it, 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 uh, you know, if he dies, it's not going to affect your world tendency or your character tendency. Um, but you're just going to, you know, miss out on, um, some other stuff later in the game, which is, 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 is not a big deal at all if he dies. In fact, I think in my other walkthrough, he did die. Um, but when he dies, you get his armor and his armor is very hefty. Um, so I'm going to try to kill this dragon as quickly as possible to see if I can spare Bior's life. So I'm just going to rapid fire at my arrows here. See if I can get a little bit closer and do some more damage, maybe. I'm getting about 25 a pop from that. Yeah, I'm doing a little bit more damage from here. So um, I'm going to camp out here for a bit until the, uh, until the blue dragon is dead. Moments later. Okay, so the blue dragon is almost dead here. And we got him. Okay, good deal. So we got all of his souls, and we got the large-scaled flame demon soul, which we're going to be able to cash in for a pretty considerable amount of souls. And again, the only purpose of that soul that you get from the dragon is to consume it. It will not give you any uh, ma any magic, any miracles, any weapon. Um, so you might as well just uh, consume it for the souls. The and fortunately, we were able to do it quickly enough to oh. spare... <laughs> Bior's life. Um, again, if he dies in your game, not a big deal. But what we're going to do now is, um, after we get the loot, we're going to get the shortcut in this level. Um, down here, we get a knight's shield and a knight's sword. Um, let's see. So we're going to stick with our current setup here send this to storage as well um so over here is where the shortcut is pull this lever it's gonna open up this door right in front of us and through here we get the blue-eyed knight's greaves and then this is the ladder that you can you can come up from the other side um So we're going to head on back this way, past Bior. And on into the palace. And here is Ostrava, our good friend. So he passes away, and he leaves us uh, the mausoleum key. And we need this for something that we are going to get later on in this um, in this level. Um, so that's what we came here for, was that mausoleum key. So uh, we are actually going to return um, to the Nexus at this point. And uh, we are going to save the boss for later. I like to kill this boss last. Um, so we're gonna save him. Actually, I should I should be taking the shortcut now that I think of it. Um, don't know why I was going the long way. Actually, this shortcut did not exist in the PS3 version. This is an addition to um, to the remake. So they threw us a little bone here. Especially once you unlock it, it allows you to get past the the blue dragon way easier if you did not decide to actually kill him. Um, but again. I do recommend that you kill him because the rewards are are pretty nice, including but not limited to the uh, the boost to your world tendency. So, um, so head on back to the Archdome. We're gonna go back to the Nexus. And we're going to do some uh, housekeeping real quick. Do some leveling up. And where is the maiden? There she is. Uh, I'll do my HP 
for the time being. Um, and again, we are about to get my end game weapon in this game. Um, we'll get it by the end of the episode. Uh, and again, the end game weapon that I use does not scale off of any particular stat. In fact, it scales off of character tendency. Um, so what I mean by that is, and we're going to consume this demon soul from the dragon that we just got. Um, and it gives us 30,000. Not bad. And so what I mean by that is this weapon, the, the, the closer your character tendency gets towards pure white. Um, let's see, I'll go ahead and knock up my endurance by one more. The closer that your character tendency gets to pure white, the more powerful that this weapon becomes. And that is, that is the trick to this weapon that we're going to be using. Um, is that it scales off of character tendency. Now, if you take your character tendency towards pure black, the weapon becomes useless. And in fact, a pure black character tendency, the, the weapon does zero damage. So I'll, I'll, I'll kind of demonstrate what I mean when we get it. Um, but for now, we're going to do the World Tendency events in uh, the first Archstone here. So for starters, um, this gate is now unlocked because we're in Pure White World Tendency. I pointed it out like at the very beginning of the game that um, this gate unlocks either at Pure White or Pure Black. So we're at Pure White, so it, it is unlocked so we can finally get through to this area. Actually, it was unlocked earlier, but um, I decided to uh, leave the uh, World Tendency events to this point in the game. So we'll will be strong enough at this point in the game to handle both the pure white tendency events and the pure black tendency events all in one fell swoop. Um, and again, the other pure white tendency event in this level is um, if both, I mean, the dragons are both dead now, so it doesn't matter, but if they were alive in pure white world tendency, they um, are they no longer occupy their nest way up at the, at the top of, uh, of the palace here. So I'm just picking up all this stuff. It's really just a bunch of, you know, crescent moon grass. We've got a mail breaker, you know, nothing to write home about. Um, I'm going to send these shards to storage. And whoops, want to send all of them to storage. Um, I'm going to send the mail breaker to storage. Okay, sweet. So those black phantoms that spawned are, are not much of a threat. And unlike the other black phantoms in the game, these, these actually do respawn. So every time you come back to this area, these guys are going to come back, unfortunately. Whoops. Oh, are you serious? I, I was just trying to muscle my way through them, and I guess they got strength in numbers. That's okay. Now they're thinning out the herd a little bit. See, I'm one-shotting these guys for the most part. And they they all drop crescent moon grass. It's all good. There we go. Now that they're not expecting me. A little bit easier to handle there. Okay, so... um. In Pure White World Tendency, we're actually going to face a NPC named Meralda. She's going to kind of ambush us, and she's going to aggro to us right away. So there's no talking to her. There's no, like, dialogue with her or anything like that. Once you go through this door, she's kind of hanging off to the side. So you want to pop in, roll out immediately, and we're going to fight her. And much like um, Satsuki in World 4, when we fought him in Pure, we fought him in pure White World Tendency... Um, this is going to take our. Uh, this is going to take away our pure white world tendency. It is not going to impact our character tendency, however, because she is hostile. But it will take our world tendency towards pure black, which is okay, because we've done all the pure white world tendency events now, and so now it's time to take on pure black anyway. So this actually will reduce the number of you know stones of ephemeral eyes and whatnot that we have to use uh, to get to to get to pure black. So let's see. We got a ring from her. Um, we got the master's ring, which you already have one. So I'm going to send the duplicate to storage. And then um, the the uh, we got the binded armor set. Um, from her. And there are some items in here that we're going to get. Some of them are a little bit tricky. And you'll notice, see that hole up there? You know, that, that, that that's the hole that kind of tempts you to drop down. And if you drop down, you're going to die. Um, so we're actually in that area that if you could drop down through that hole, you would drop down here. Um, so we've got a poison resistance ring. I believe we already have one of these. So I'm going to take away the duplicate. Um, yeah, we got one of those in 2-1. Um, so on these rafters, there is an item down there. It is, it is a bit tricky to get. So I'm going to come back here uh, after, we get the, after we get the loot at the bottom um, because... I do, I do fall from time to time because it is a bit of a tricky drop down. And that item is actually a colorless demon soul. This, that's one of the few you can get without 
um, without killing a primeval demon. So all the way here at the bottom of this ladder. Uh, it's, a, it's a, you know, it's a big set, the bushwood set, and then a large bushwood shield. It's very heavy armor, um, and there's nothing really across this little plank. You know, you see, if you, if you drop down, it's death, so don't drop down, and there's, there's nothing over there. So um, we're going to head back up the ladder, and then we're going to try to drop down and get this colorless demon soul. If we die, we die. I mean, I've got 8,000 souls at risk. I'm not going to lose sleep over losing 8,000 souls at this point in the game. Um... But uh, I am going to try to get this item here. Um, sometimes I do slip up because you have to be pretty precise with, uh, with dropping down in order to not fall. So here you see there's a gap like in the walkway. So if you just slide on off here, you should fall safely there. Sometimes it doesn't always work that way, but that's how you do it. Um, sometimes you slip off at just the wrong angle and then you fall down to your death. Um, so we get a colorless demon soul, and then um, technically there is a way. Yeah, you can cut, you can slip down onto this one right here, and I missed it, but I don't care because really, if you land on that one, it allows you to get all the way to the bottom without um, without dying. But in any case, I'm not all I'm not I'm not been out of shape about it, so I'm gonna go ahead and reload the level. Basically, use the arch stone to either warp or reload. That that takes your, your world tendency changes into effect. So you see now, we, before we were at pure white, now we're at neutral because we did kill uh, Meralda. So now what I need to do is we need to kill ourselves four times in human form using stones of ephemeral eyes to get to pure black. So that is our next mission, is to get to pure black world tendency. And so the quickest way to uh, repetitively... repetitively um, take deaths in human form is to run over to this cliff over here and just roll off. So we're going to need to do this uh, three more times to get our world to pure black. And as with the other worlds and pure black world tendency... We are going to be killing the Black Phantom version of Meralda, which, as with the other Black Phantoms, is, you know, it's a much more difficult version of the enemy. Um, and then we're going to be uh, getting the Primeval Demon. So, I lost my souls permanently, as, remember, I, I fell off the ledge in that little, uh, I guess it's like a well or something like that. I fell off the ledge there, and I, I didn't go back and retrieve my souls, because... They probably would have been on those rafters and I would have had to drop down and do all that again. And I didn't, I wasn't about to do all that over. So, um, cause that was number two. Again, we need to do this four times to get from neutral to pure black. And, um, if you're in pure white, you actually have to do it seven times to get from pure white to pure black. But since we were in neutral, we only have to do it four times. So even though this is only the third time, I'm going to go ahead and reload the level just to just to double check that my math is right here. So reload the area. And we should be one step above pure black, I believe. Yes. So you see, we do not have the red sparklies and the uh, icon there. So that means we have to do it one more time. Back into human form. And I, I feel compelled to pick up this blood stain every time. Because why not? All right. So now once we re reload the level, we should be in, um, in pure black. So again, it doesn't take effect until you use an arch stone to either reload the level or warp. So once we do this, the level will reload and we'll see our red sparklies on the on the icon there, which tells us we are in pure black, which means that Black Phantom Meralda has spawned. And so now we have to go take her out. Yeah. 
And unfortunately, these black phantom draglings do come back. And in pure black tendency, they are going to be a little bit more difficult than they were before. And letting that crystal lizard get away, but I don't need it, so. All right. Not the brightest, folks, but oh well. Bunch more crescent moon grass. And uh, Meralda is going to be over here. And she hits hard in her black phantom form, so do tread carefully. And again, you do not want her to die from fall damage, so you do not want to engage her on that ledge because if she falls off, she will die. You want to pop in and immediately leave so you fight her out here and she, and she does not fall to her death. You want to be careful about that because, again, if she falls to her death, you do not get the boost to your character tendency. And, again, the reasons why we want pure white character tendency are because the weapon that we're about to get scales off of off of white character tendency. And so the, the closer to pure white you are, the stronger this weapon's going to become. And then also, there is a ring that you, you can only get and pure white character tendency. So that's what we're that's what we're trying so hard to get to pure white character tendency is because we can't get that ring um, unless we're in pure white. And um, you know there is a trophy associated with getting all the rings in the game. So again, if you're if you're hunting for that platinum trophy, you're going to need to be doing all of this. Um, there are ways to. Um, whoops. There are ways. Did she just heal? I think she did. There are ways to. Um, to, to change your character tendency without fighting these black phantoms, and they all involve playing online. Again, if you're trying to go for platinum on your first playthrough, I do not recommend doing that because, gosh, I was trying to, I got greedy. Oh no, I'm in, I'm in bad shape here. I need to run off and heal. Oof, that was close. That was close. See if I can get a second chance. Uh, see if I can cast it. I don't have the MP to cast it. Oh well. Well, if she leaves me alone, I'm going to throw a spice on and recast it. Um, so you have about two hits. She can she can do me in here. Um, again, going back to the previous conversation, um, I don't recommend playing online for your first playthrough if you're going for platinum just because playing online can mess with your world tendency. Um... And so t the only way to really truly guarantee uh, tendency manipulations is to play offline for world tendency. All right, come on, can I get her here? Nice, just got her. Okay, good deal. So that's our third black phantom. And we got the guillotine axe. So she drops that in her black phantom form. Um, but uh, that said... The way that you can influence your uh, character tendency by playing online, and now I'll, I'll be able to explain all this because we're going to, again, have to trek to the primeval demon on foot. Um, so the way that you can influence your character tendency by playing online is if you get invaded by a, uh, uh, by a black phantom in PvP, if you kill the invading black phantom... Um, you will move your character tendency towards pure white. Uh, if you are playing online and you invade someone else's game, you are the invader, and if you kill the host that you invade, that, that actually will take your character tendency towards pure black. Um, there's actually also a boss fight later in the game. We have not gotten to it yet. It's actually the Archdemon in World 3. If you're playing online there is a very high likelihood that you're going to play against another human who is controlling the boss. Um, and so if you win that fight, if it, if it turns out that you're fighting a, another player in PvP in that boss fight um, and you win, that will take your character tendency towards pure white as well. Your character tendency towards pure white. Um, and likewise, if you invade somebody, if, if you become the boss in that boss fight by invading... Um, much like invading someone else's game normally, that's going to take, if you win the fight, that's going to take your character tendency towards pure black. So, um, if, let's say you mess up on one of the five black phantoms, my recommendation is to play online for the um, old monk fight, that's the archdemon in World 3, is play online for that one fight. 
and you're probably in all in all likelihood you're going to be playing against another person um as the boss and as such you're going to um when you kill the boss you're going to uh get that get that benefit to your character tendency now that said it can be a bit challenging to uh, to kill. I mean, depending on how good the player is that you're playing against, that boss can be pretty challenging. Um, so just just beware of that. It's actually a fairly easy boss if you're playing offline. If you're playing online, it really depends on the on the skill of whoever you're matched up against. Um, but again, if you mess up if you mess up one of these black phantoms and you need you need that extra boost to your character tendency to get to pure white, that's a, that's one way to do it is to play online for the. Uh, the uh, World 3 Archdemon. I have so much Crescent Moon Grass from those guys that were dropping it earlier. Um, this one I'm just going to run past. Oh, he broke my guard. Okay. So again, we are headed off to the Primeval Demon. And if you hadn't watched my other episodes where we kill the Primeval Demons, the reason why we have to do this on foot is because if you warp, it is going to incorporate the change to your world tendency towards pure white that you get from killing the Black Phantom. And that will despawn the Primeval Demon. So um, just keep that in mind. And if you kill the Primeval Demon first and try to warp to the Black Phantom, killing the Primeval Demon shifts your world tendency towards pure white. So if you kill the primeval demon and try to warp to the black phantom, the uh, the the warp will trigger the uh, incorporation of your world tendency effect from killing the primeval demon towards pure white, and the the black phantom will despawn. So just keep all that in mind. That's why we have to walk all the way over here on foot. Um. And there's the you can kind of you can kind of see the the. The tentacles of the primeval demon over here. There he is. He's kind of surrounded by those crossbow archers. And as with the other ones, I'm going to throw on my uh, providential ring just to increase the likely likelihood of getting that uh, colorless demon soul. Because again, it is a it is a very common drop, but it is no it is not a guaranteed drop. Okay, we got our colorless demon soul. Nice. So I'm going to put my thief's ring back on here. Um, and that's it. We did the um, black, uh, black world tendency events in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Let's see, do I have another archstone shard? I do. So I'm going to use this to warp back to the Nexus. And again, using the Archstone Shard as opposed to your Nexial Binding will allow you to keep your souls upon warping back to the Nexus. Um, so now we have our three colorless demon souls. So I'm going to go ahead and pick up the, uh, I believe, is, is it a miracle oh, that, that you get? Yes, it is a miracle. The recovery miracle you get from having three colorless demon souls. So we have three colorless demon souls now. So I'm going to go ahead and get this miracle, which again, you're going to need... I'm not even going to equip it, but you're going to need it for the All Miracles Trophy. Um, and so now we're actually headed back to 1-1. Um, because if you remember, we got the Mausoleum Key from Ostrava and 1-4. And so we are going to head to use that key because that is where the weapon that we want to get is. And also, there is, I call him a mini-boss. Um, he is quite strong, but I, 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 I would, I would call him a mini boss. And, uh, he actually drops, oh geez, he's gonna, don't blow up those barrels. Um, he drops a ring that we're going to need for the all rings trophy, so... Good stuff, indeed. And so this is the shortcut that takes us up to the top 
at the level. And we're actually going back over to where we fought that red-eyed knight at the very beginning of the game. And we're going to see how much of a joke he is at this point in the game. Just uh, a reminder of how far we've come in this game because he is very difficult to fight at the very beginning, but not a problem at this point in the game. All right, so I'm still going to run ahead. Shield up. Just, whoop. There we go. Just like that. So we got the mausoleum key. That unlocks this door, which was previously locked. And in here, we have old King Doran. So we actually have to kind of engage him in, in, in combat. Uh, he is... At this phase, he's not very hard, and once you do a, a set number, a set amount of damage to him, he will allow you to draw that sword. And he is not very aggressive right now. You can see he's like hardly even trying to hit me, and uh, very easy to take care of. And eventually, once I get him to a certain Probably, I think it's, I think you get him to 75% health, he'll uh, stop fighting you. But he does hit hard, so just uh, be careful. Actually, I'm going to, speaking of which, I'm just going to throw on my second chance just in case. Okay. So we've done enough damage to him. And so, as a reward, we can draw the Demon Brant. So, this is my pretty much in-game weapon for my initial playthrough. Um, so, let's check it out. The Demon Brant, um, as you see, it requires 18 strength and 14 dex to use, but uh, it does magical and physical damage. You'll see the bonus that we have. The bonus is um, in line with... Um, the character tendency boost. So because we've killed three black phantoms, this the plus 78 and plus 66 is going to, um, you know, be boosted because we killed those three black phantoms. Once we kill all five and get to pure white character tendency, that plus 78 and plus 66 is going to be a plus, plus 130 and plus 110. So once this weapon is fully boosted, you can see just how crazy the damage is going to be. So right now, as we have it equipped... Um, it does 384 damage. Compare that to a Crescent Falchion, which does 261. Um, it is a bit of a slower weapon that takes more stamina to use, but it hits so hard. It's very good at breaking enemies' guard and stun stunning them. And so this is a very good weapon to be using, and especially once we get to our pure black character tendency, it's going to be even better. Um, on the other hand, if you have pure black character tendency, that, that you know, instead of plus 130 and plus 110 like we would have in pure white, uh, in pure black character tendency, you're going to have minus 130 and minus 110, and this weapon's literally going to do zero damage. And so the only way to uh, to get to get this weapon more powerful is to increase our character tendency towards pure white. So I'm going to be using this as my primary weapon for pretty much the rest of the game. It is a little bit heavier, but since we've been upgrading our stamina, um, we have enough um, equipment burden to uh, to equip it without without really any any cost to us. So. This is the Demon Brant, and this is what I'm going to be using for most of the rest of the game, and it's very strong now, and it's only going to get stronger. So, very good for us. Um, so, I'm going to go ahead and cut this episode right now. Um, we're going to pick back up right where we left off next time. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please consider joining the squad by subscribing to the channel. Leave a like and a comment. Um, if you're stuck, if you need any help with anything, let me know. I've been trying to be as diligent as possible about responding to people's questions and whatnot. So anyways, um, take care of yourself. Have a good day, and I will see you in the next one.